Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Render Man tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at the PXR Surface Shader and how we render glass with it. So to start out, we're going to create a um, glass that we can use to render. Um, I have no idea why my cylinders are being imported with this sort of shape, but we'll quickly fix that. Okay, Maya's being weird today. Um, so what we're going to start off by doing is just inserting this um, top face, so we'll just grab the center vertex and hit Control E to extrude it, and then we'll move that vertex back down, and then we can line all those up by selecting all the top ones and um, transforming them inwards. We'll grab the edge of this edge loop and just scale it out like so, and then finally we'll grab all these faces which I'll just grab from the top and then make sure I deselect the bottom ones and we will hit Control e again and extrude and just move them down now because we're going to be subdividing this we'll quickly add some edge loops in so we'll just left click on that with the edge selected um, shift right click and then select insert edge loop we'll just put one on those edges there there and at the bottom. Now when we subdivide we get something that looks like that so you'll be able to make a whiskey glass that works for you as well. Um, now for the liquid in the center uh, I'll just use a cube for this because it'll subdivide a bit nicer. Um, we're going to scale that up, hit 3 and you'll see we get that sort of effect. So, so control 1 on it, go to edge again and we'll insert an edge loop at the top and at the bottom. So now we get a cylinder but um, the difference with this one is that it doesn't have any tries whereas if I show this you can see the center's try so that doesn't subdivide quite as nicely so it's better to have something that looks like that for your liquid because you will likely see the top of it. And I'm also just going to select it and go to mesh and smooth and I'll just smooth once so we get it to look like that. We can go to wireframe and just check the intersections and what we were looking for here is I'll go to the side view and this is for if you're rendering uh, any liquid inside a glass. Maybe hard to tell um, if you don't know what you're looking at here but this is the inside glass wall and this is the outside glass wall and what we want our liquid to do is be sort of in between and then that goes for the bottom we just want it to follow the silhouette. So basically it's just going to be outside the the um, the cavity of whatever your the internal structure of your um, glass or glass object is. Same with any wine glasses or things like that as well. That is the result you will get. Um, however, I've already created a slightly nice looking version based on one of my own tumblers. It's not particularly detailed, but it will do and it will give us a slightly more interesting result. So what we're going to do is add in a floor and a couple of lights and then if we have a quick look at the render um, you'll see that's what it looks like. I've just got my it preview, I just docked to the right hand side of my screen so we can have my open at the same time. So that's fine. Now let's start by assigning shaders to both our um, glass and our um, liquid. So we'll select the glass and we'll just hit the pixel surface and then we're going to change the name of that to glass and we'll do the same thing for our liquid and that can be called whiskey because this is going to be whiskey. Um, so we'll start with the glass, we'll go over to the glass shader and the first thing we want to do is reduce the diffuse gain down to zero and then increase the glass refraction and reflection gain to 1.0. So now when we render You'll see that it is transparent, um, as you can see. A bit hard to tell with a black background, but um, you get the idea. I might actually just quickly put a shader on the ground as well. Okay, so I've just put a slightly darker shader on the ground so we can see everything a little bit better. So you can see now that our glass is transparent. Um, it is a little bit rough though, so let's go into that shader and we'll go down to our glass. So refraction gain is just how much um, the light is able to refract through. So the lower it is, the more opaque your glass will be. Uh, reflection gain is just how reflected or specular it is. So you could still have it being refractive, but without specularity. 
Refraction color is tinting, and we'll do that when we sort out our material for our uh, liquid. And then roughness is the roughness of the reflection on the outside of your surface. So for glass, if you're looking to do sort of a, a glass that you would drink liquid out of, somewhere between 0 and 0 0.1 is probably where I'd land. I'm going to try 0.03 on this one, and a little bit of roughness isn't bad. Um, it just helps with the reflection of lights and things like that. So if we have a look where our light is. So what you'll see is our light has just got a little bit more of a halo to it because of the way that the roughness is dispersing the light as it refracts through. It just makes it look a little bit more interesting, but you could go for a straight clean glass if you wish. You can affect the roughness a bit more if we select our glass material in the Hypershade Editor, and then we can plug in a noise generator, for example. So we'll use a Pixar or noise here. And actually, I don't believe this glass is uv so I'm just going to run a quick UV uh, planar on it and that will do and we will run the result F into the glass roughness and now when we render we'll get a variety of roughness okay so uh, just to show you this a bit better what I've done here is I've just plugged a manifold into the Voronoise, I haven't adjusted anything though, I was going to possibly change the size of it, but I haven't. These are my settings for the Voronoise, and I've just got it plugged into the Diffuse channel just to show you what it's doing. So the areas that are closer to white or a value of 1 are going to be areas that are rough, and then the areas that are darker or closer to a value of 0 uh, are going to be uh, not rough. So when we turn our Diffuse channel off, what we should see is a bit of sort of spottiness um, in our glass Okay, so I've just put the camera inside the glass so you can see it a little bit easier. So this is pointing out towards the light. You can see these areas here. These are the darker areas. So we're actually seeing this dark background that we have. And then the white, whiter areas are the rough areas. So zooming out, that's the sort of effect you get in the glass. And um, you can actually see it quite clearly from this angle as well. So you could use this uh, roughness input for things like frosted glass and things like that. You don't have to use a noise. Um, seeing since that this is UV, we could actually use a ramp, PXR ramp, and transition it from black to white. And we'll just run the result RGBR into the glass roughness. And then if we render that, we should see a nice smooth transition from one to the other. Um, make sure you've got it on T. And then we may need to reverse it. So we'll say the top is clear and the bottom is um, frosted. There you go, you can see how that's working. Actually, why don't we might hide that internal area to make it a little bit more obvious. So what the roughness cares about is values of zero, uh, between zero and one. So you could actually use this to add patterns um, if you want, and you could change the interpolation to be something like a constant, for example. So then we could go from white to black, and now you can see I've added frosted stripes in, and I can change the weight of those by just going in and changing the selected color value to be closer to a darker value, which will make it less rough. And isotropy is something that I covered in the specular section uh, of the Pixar Surface tutorial, but essentially it's going to change the sort of specular highlight um, to either uh, squash it in either the horizontal or vertical direction. Shading tangent is something that you would worry about if we're setting up more complex shading networks. So I can't remember if I've covered this in the past, for any other uh, tutorials, but I'll have a look at this, but I'll probably use it more in the um, specular lobe rather than in the glass lobe. So we'll just go back down, bump, you can set a separate bump map for your glass if you wish, um, and then refractive index is probably the thing that you want to look at most. Glass usually has a refractive index of, depending on what it is, somewhere between 1.3 and 1.5. Um, I believe water is usually considered 1.3 and glass is 1.5, but don't quote me, I am just doing this off the top of my head. However, what that will affect is the way it refracts light. So um, sort of think of it like a magnifying glass. The higher refractive index, the more magnifies things behind it are going to appear. Let's add our liquid back in and we'll increase its refractive and reflective index and turn off its gain on its diffuse channel. So now at the moment we have got a clear liquid. Um, and because it's a liquid, I'm going to 
pretty much reduce its roughness to nothing. You could have some roughness on it if you want. Um, it's not necessarily incorrect to. Um, it's just going to be easier for us to see if it doesn't though. And what we'll do here is we're going to change the, ref uh, the refraction color to be closer to something like whiskey, which is sort of an ambery color, something like that. So you'll see that um, the light that's being transmitted through it now has actually been tinted the color um, of uh, our refractive color. What you may want to do here though is because we're getting an accumulation in the refraction of the, the liquid and then the glass is that we could actually set this to thin and this will allow the liquid to transmit a little bit more light through. However is not necessarily physically correct. So you may want to set it to that, you may not. It depends on your shot setup and what you're going for. It's actually interesting to look at the difference though, if we just move the camera. So that's what it looks like with the refractive index, uh, sorry, with the with thin turned off for the glass. If we turn thin on for the glass, you'll see what happens is the liquid appears inside the glass and the glass doesn't have any sort of magnification. Now, when you look at a, a photo of, of a glass of liquid, it does appear that the liquid is touching the outer edge of the glass. It's, it, it meets all the way up to the edge of the glass and that's why we set the liquid up to intersect the area between the outside and the inside of the cavity. Um, if you don't do this then it won't appear to do that when you have thin turned off. So if you're looking for something more realistic it is better to have thin turned off and then you'll get the uh, liquid meeting the edge. The last couple of things that we can look at are the interior. Um, this is sort of more for subsurface scattering but I can show you what it does. If we increase the single scatter albedo to um, a value of 1 and then we can increase the extinction. So that, see that sort of clouds the glass. So if you're looking for a frosted effect this is a way to do it. It is going to be a little bit more render intensive than just using roughness but because you are able to use your roughness separately on the outside of it this may give you a slightly more realistic result uh, and maybe slightly more. Scattering directionality is just going to define the direction that the light is being scattered. Um, so at zero it is going to be forward. Um, if it's set into a negative direction it's going to be toward backward and then if it's towards a value of 1 it's going to be isotropic. And then multiple scattering is just going to scatter the light more on the inside which will result in lighter rays on the internal areas of the glass. So you'll see that the, um, if I stop that render and then turn off multiple scattering, you'll see that the value has gone right up between that render and that render there. I'll cover this a lot more though when I go into subsurface scattering in a later tutorial. Um, just back to the advanced tab, we will look at uh, looking at ignore accumulative opacity. If you have that enabled in your render settings, um, it will override it for this material. And accumulative opacity is basically if you've got mo multiple glass layers that have some opacity to them. So um, slightly less than 1.0 refraction for example they will become darker and darker as you as a light ray goes through them until it completely cuts it off so that's essentially what that is um, very specific situations require that so if you're starting out probably not something you need to worry about and blocks volumes if you've got to say a solid cube um, and you had some smoke traveling into it the smoke would be blocked so you wouldn't actually be able to see it um, on the inside whereas if you have this deselected it will be visible on the inside so obviously if you've got something like this glass smoke would not be able to travel directly through it so it's just saying that where, where there's interior areas where there's a volume it won't be rendered. So there you go that is just a brief overview of how you can create a glass of whatever liquid you wish. Um, I drink my whiskey neat so that's why there's no ice in this one but if you did want to add ice you would use the same uh, shading technique with glass. I've got actually a separate tutorial on how to shade glass with uh, sorry how to make ice cubes with render man so if you want to check that out have a look at that tutorial that i've already created that's it for this tutorial if you found it useful make sure you leave a like so other people can find it and if you haven't already make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out cg and illustration tutorials every week just like this one become a patron and access tutorial assets bonus content a private discord and more by clicking the link below